Hello, my darlings. I wanted to tape this video because I'm sewing a strike off for Wanderlust, and um, I figured why not share my process with you since I don't think I've done an actual video on my YouTube channel for sewing a um, strike off for any group or uh, at least for sure not a blanket. So I'm using this super amazing uh, Pirate Mickey adult topper that I got from Wanderlust. It's a round that will be opening uh, sometime very soon. I will link the group and the website in the description below. It is so adorable and it is so fluffy. I absolutely love it and my little one claimed it. It has super nice stretch. It's uh, I've worked with a lot of Minky. I haven't felt a uh, minky that it's this uh, fluffy and stretchy. So I was uh, pleasantly surprised when I got this in the mail. So it will not only make a beautiful blanket like I'm making right now, but it will also be amazing for clothing, like winter attire. And uh, I do want to uh, precede this video by stating that I am not crazy. I have been so I'm sewing this super fluffy blanket while it's uh, 92 degrees outside but uh, hey if uh, kiddo asks for a fluffy blanket we give kiddo a fluffy blanket so i went to walmart actually and i bought uh two twin um sherpa blankets they were on sale for four dollars to back my uh, my blanket so it basically the backing cost me eight dollars for this super fluffy uh, blanket it they're 50 by 60 the twin blankets so i'm going to sew them on the long end this way i will have a blanket that is um 100 by uh, 60. an adult topper is uh, about the width of fabric so about 58 by 72 which is two yards so it would be just right a little bit bigger but it will work because i plan on uh, making this um, um self-binding blanket so uh, right now i'm going to sew the two blankets together simply by placing them um along the long end one on top of the other overlapping about um, one inch half an inch about an inch i'm overlapping the blanket is already hemmed so this definitely helps the process by a lot this is a pretty quick sew especially when you use a pre-hemmed blanket and i'm and i'm not cutting anything i plan on not cutting anything from the blanket so there is little to no fuzz in the air in my sewing room and um I don't have to I will only have to clean my machine afterwards so simply overlap the two blankets on the long end right both are right side up and I sew a, just a straight stitch to um, uh, make the the bigger blanket so it's two twin and I overlap them at one of the sides which is uh, 60 inches I see that I'm having a little bit of a difficulty um with my walking feet going walking foot going in the um sherpa M the feet for the walking foot are like a th the machine has like three little feet because it's a walking foot and so two moves uh two move uh, separately than the um, the middle one so basically i have three little feet that can catch on the sherpa so i'm gonna attempt to sew this with my machine just occasionally by pulling the little um, fluff that gets stuck in the feet but uh, a suggestion that I have for this type of sewing would be to just use um, a water soluble stabilizer on top of the blanket under your presser feet so just like you would uh, do embroidery I would use that. I'm going to be uh, stubborn right now and just finish sewing with the uh, presser fit right on top of the little Sherpa fluffy blanket. 
but uh, I might try later on to actually use some water soluble stabilizer. So just overlap and keep going until the end of this, uh, this line to make a huge uh, blanket that would be uh, 120, um, no, 100 by 60. So now that you have your big blanket, I'm, I'm just putting the um, minky topper that I have wrong side to the wrong side of the blanket that I just made. So right now I'm just laying them wrong sides together. I'm not uh, sewing and turning. I'm just self binding. So because the blanket is at least one or two inches uh, wider on each side, it gives me plenty of fabric to just fold it over. And for the top and the bottom is definitely uh, bigger than the than the topper. Is uh, the topper is two yards, so that's about seventy two inches, and my blanket is a, is uh, about a hundred inches in in uh, length. So that gives me plenty of edge to turn at the top and the bottom. And the sides I have about an inch an inch and a half on both ends. So right now I'm just placing my uh, fluffy Sherpa blanket and just folding it one time. I'm using the existing hem of the um, blanket, of the Sherpa blanket, to make my life even easier. So this was uh, actually a great idea. I'm not going to take credit for it. This was actually Jamie from Emmy Luhu Creations. She makes cups. Side, side note, she makes amazing cups if you want to check her out on Facebook. Her group is Emmy Luhu Creations. She is the one who suggested, just go get a store-bought blanket. You'll, you'll see how easy it is. I said, nah, it's going to be too expensive. And then I came across this uh, $4 clearance blanket and I was like, they were waiting for me. <laughs> These were perfect. And she was a genius because... I'm using the existing hem. I'm not cutting anything because we all know when you work with Minky, there is like fluff flying everywhere. So just uh, using the hem that's already in there and uh, the blanket that's already done, I've saved myself a lot of cleaning and a lot of lint rolling from my tables. So just fold the top of the blanket and then uh, the sides. The I'm not going to fold the bottom just yet because I want to see how much excess I have and, and decide what I'm going to do with it. I might make maybe an act, an, a pocket or um, just a wider uh, hem on the bottom. But for now, I'm going to just sew uh, the sides and the top. I like to um, start with the one of the edges of the blanket about five inches uh, from the top. I don't like to start in the corner when I make my blankets, whether they're self binding or just turning inside out. Uh, I start about five inches from the top and just obviously backstitch, get to the corner. So you will probably see that you uh, might have a hard time with the Sherpa like I am right now, even if you're using just a regular sewing machine and not uh, uh, an industrial or a walking foot because of the fluffiness and the, the loops of the Sherpa, they may get stuck in your presser feet. So um, you either have to go very slowly or use a water soluble stabilizer. It's not impossible. As you can see, I am uh, able to sew it. It just, I stop once in a while to just take those loops out of my presser foot, but I do think that I'm going to end up uh, using water soluble stabilizer after all. Because, um, you know, trial and error. So at least you get to see how I'm I'm fussing with it before I, I give up and actually use uh, water soluble stabilizer. So keep sewing all the way to the end. Now, this is the top of the the blanket and I'm going to go ahead and pivot and sew all the way down uh, to on the right side of the blanket. So I'm speeding this video up because you don't need to hear the machine going for. Uh, although it is a pretty um, 
pretty fast sewing machine you still don't want to waste time watching me sew a straight stitch but on a side note i do love my industrial for blankets i've discovered that it's not just great for for uh, sewing bags it's amazing for blanket because this is an industrial with a walking foot so it's uh it makes it super easy uh to sew a blanket so now that we have uh, almost reached the end i'm gonna go ahead and sew all the way down and stop uh, on this side i'm not gonna turn because i haven't decided yet what i want to, to do with uh with the bottom of the blanket because i do have an excess of the sherpa so i might do a, like a pocket for the feet or just make a bigger edge on the bottom so for now i'm just gonna go ahead and um, pin the other side and sew the left side of the blankets because right now i have the, the top sewn and the right side so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, sew the left side and just leave the the bottom of the blanket undone uh unsewn of, as of now just to decide what i can do when I have, when you have access like that in the bottom, like you can do do the right thing and just uh, go ahead and cut and fold twice and just self bind the blanket, just like you did before. But you will have to make that hem. Right now, I'm using the hem that uh, the blankets manufacturer made for <laughs> for the blanket. So if I do end up cutting, or if you decide if you're doing this style blanket and you decide to cut. Uh, you will need to hem the bottom to have the same look as uh, as the rest of the blanket and just fold it like I am right now. I don't want to do that because I know cutting and hemming Sherpa is not my idea of fun. <laughs> I'd rather not, uh, not deal with that. But this excess that you see right here is the one that I'm, I'm talking about that we will have, I'll have to to either make a wider um, overlap at the bottom or make like a little pocket. But for now, until I made up on my, make up my mind what I'm going to do, I'm just hemming on that side and leaving the bottom as it is. You obviously have a lot of options when you have like an excess of uh, a few inches. So I'm just double checking that uh, all my uh, that my excess is the same on the left side and the right side. You don't want to have like a crooked bottom of the uh, of the blanket. So it looks like it matches. I'm just checking that it matches on both sides to the corner and it looks like it's perfect. So I'm just uh, going to go ahead and sew that straight stitch and um, take it from there. If you ever have the opportunity of getting an industrial sewing machine i do encourage you to go for a walking foot one because it's amazing for sewing minky too so now that that uh, those three sides are done i have decided to go ahead and uh, make like a wider hem on the bottom so I've, i'm laying my blanket as it is right side up and simply flip uh, an overlap about an inch the the sherpa blanket so right now at the top i have like maybe two inches i want to say uh hem self-binding hem this one will have about eight inches with it folded like this so i'm adding a few clips on one side i have those mega clips that i absolutely love i it, they were like an impulse buy uh, one day I, like I said, I said, you never know when I'll need them. And I realized that they're amazing for blankets. And not so much for when you sew clothing, but those mega clips work well on blankets, especially fluffy ones like this one. So I'm going to go ahead and pin in the center. And I encourage you when you do pin, uh, because I can use clips in the center, to count how many pins you're using. Let's say one, two, three, whatever amount. And remember, how many pins you put there because when you finish you want to make sure that as you take out as many pins as you put in the last thing you want to do is give this blanket as a gift or give it to your kiddo and they have pins in it at the bottom so that's my trick just count whenever you pin to make sure you have the same amount 
So this time I'm actually going to help go ahead and use the water soluble stabilizer that I mentioned before. I'm using this uh, Salky uh, Tearaway water soluble stabilizer. I'm going to link uh, link it in the description of this video. I've been I'm using this stabilizer for uh, any anything you can think of. Like that's why I buy the little roll because uh, before I before having the industrial machine and I was doing the bags on my regular sewing machine and this helped whenever I used uh, vinyl or even worse with glitter vinyl it's absolutely mandatory so the presser fit slides so whenever you have a problem with the presser fit sliding on your fabric I recommend you put a piece of water soluble stabilizer in between your presser fit and your um, your fabric so that's what I used it for. That's why I have the little roll. And then, of course, you, you use it for embroidery. But now it turns out like you need to have it around if you plan on sewing a Sherpa blanket like I am right now. Because uh, once you put those uh, that soluble stabilizer in between your feet and your, uh, your blanket, then nothing will get st um, stuck in your presser foot. So... Uh, and you just remove it super easy by tearing it away. You just pull it and it removes super, super easy. And whatever is left in between the stitches, it will dissolve it within the first wash. So you just pull it out. And then if you have like a few um, pieces of stabilizer here and there, no stressing. Once you wash the blanket the first time, it will go away. Or if you don't want to wait, you just take a little damp cloth and just tap it on it and it will it will just disappear. So I tend to cut about a 12 inch piece from that roll. I'm not, I don't want to use the whole roll to make one straight stitch. So, cause they're not expensive, but they're not cheap. So I, and I don't like to be super wasteful. So I like to just cut one piece of 12 inch and then reuse that one, tear it away and reuse another strip, tear it away and reuse another strip. And you'll see me do that when I sew the long, uh, the long stitch. So um, we have one of the sides done already. So all we have to do right now is just sew the other side, making sure that you catch the minky blanket in the stitch. Right now I overlapped about an inch, so it's easy to that, for that to be pulled away if you don't pay attention. So make sure that that inch is still overlapped on the, on the minky blanket, the, the beautiful blue sketchy blue uh, design i need to make sure it's still in there and it, it's get getting caught in the stitches so obviously back stitch at the beginning and keep sewing with your water soluble stabilizer on top of the blanket and you can see it does not catch anything anymore because of the stabilizer so uh, lesson learned i should have done that from the beginning but you know what? Now I know for next time. I'm not going to take a chance next time. I'm just going to start with the with the stabilizer. Um, so you can see here, I just tore it away from the first 12 inches and then keep um, reusing it going forward. This way I don't use like half of my roll for a blanket. Because you don't need more than an inch with on the, in the stabilizer basically to just cover the the width uh, and a little bit extra of your presser fit so keep sewing until you get to the end and keep reusing that stabilizer i like this one because uh, if you're somebody that does embroidery i'm sure you're very familiar with it it's amazing when you embroider towels also because of the loops of the terry you want to always put stabilizer water soluble stabilizer on top of the towel when you embroider it so um, those loops don't get caught in your needle and you get like a tighter stitch. So um, have one of these rolls handy. And of course, as Murphy's Law says, the bobbin runs out when you least want it to. So now you get to see me changing my bobbin in um, uh, um, um, faster speed <laughs> than normal. Because I was debating cutting this off in post-production, but I said, you know what? No, 
everybody's bobbing runs out in the middle of the project so i'm just gonna let it let it there and you get to see how i change my bobbin on my dust gel luckily i had them pre-wind already so that wasn't such a big deal and um the this machine is not as smart as my regular sewing machine so it's not telling me when uh when it runs out of the bobbin so you know what you it is what it is <laughs> you win some lose some not a big deal so we are done basically i once you finish that side you are good to go remove your um water soluble stabilizer make sure you remove all your pins start counting all the number of pins you put in are the same number of pins uh, you take out of the blanket and then all you have to do is enjoy it it is super fluffy and I'm sure my little man will love it it's uh, he absolutely loved this print when he saw it like I need to have it mom I need to have it I told him I'll make it for you just give me a, a day or two to decide what backing I want to put on it and then it's gonna be all yours he was super excited about it and it's so soft because the minky the wanderlust minky is super soft the sherpa is super fluffy and super soft the only problem uh, is is that it's 94 degrees outside this time of year in florida so but hey i like to crank up my air conditioning so well i guess he will keep warm while mom is <laughs> is going crazy with the ac I hope you enjoyed this crazy video of mine as always please subscribe and turn on the notification to see the new videos that i'm gonna upload i do truly appreciate this this is a brand new uh, adventure for me and I, even my kid was telling me mom make sure you tell them to hit that bell i said what do you mean I said you know like subscribe and turn on notifications so yes i'm pretty much taking youtube lessons from my uh, seven and eight year old because they know more than me so in the words of my little man please hit that bell <laughs> oh good lord uh, so yes uh, apparently subscribing to a channel is not enough to be notified when I upload a new video so if you do want to have those notifications do turn on the uh, the little bell if there's any videos you would like me to post or any questions you have please feel free to comment here or message me on my uh, Facebook page it's uh, my creative room on Facebook I'm also on Instagram I'm on um, I'm, I'm not as active on Instagram but you can find me at Alex's creative room and uh, you can always send me a message there with any videos or so along that you would be interested in in seeing me do but for now, let's just take a moment to enjoy this adorable, adorable blanket. It turned out so super cute. Super cute. Thank you so much for joining me. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.